cabinet committees right and uh, we'll in, you know we'll be able to look at the cab memos that have come and we'll be able to proceed to the cabinet uh, for the final approval if they were that effective were they being reduced from six to two no what happened is that there were six and then we were having issues of quorum and sometimes one member would appear in three, four committees. So it was becoming logistically a nightmare, you know, uh, that this committee is meeting, uh, then you have to go, you have to come back, and I think we agreed in cabinet, and it's a, it's a good decision. We reduce them into two, one to do with governance, it has 11 ministries, the other one to do with production, it has 11 ministries, and I think it will work very well. Okay. And uh, we, we are, we'll have the first cabinet committee, I think, next week, and we'll be able to process all the agendas that are before us so that we can proceed to the cabinet. You promised the people, or rather, during the campaigns you used to say that when Raila Odinga came to the government under the handshake arrangement with the president, with President Uru Kenyatta, that's when you lost the Jubilee government of second term. And you said you'd never allow Raila Odinga into your government. Now it appears he has quite a hand in it. Yeah. Is that a deal breaker for you? Well, I look at it differently. Uh, you know, only a fool doesn't change his mind. We had President Uhuru Kenyatta, our fourth president, brought Raila to government and asked us to support Raila Odinga, which we, the people from the Mount Kenya region, were very unhappy about. And we disagreed with President Uhuru Kenyatta. And President William Ruto persuaded us that Raira is the one who has caused problems in government. He persuaded us, and he's a very persuasive leader, and we were persuaded. President William Ruto persuaded us that if we allow Raila Odinga to become president, this country will not move forward. And as a result, we disagreed with President Uhuru Kenyatta and rejected Raila Odinga and gave our vote to President William Ruto. So when we came into office, it was my agreement with President William Ruto that we will not allow Raila into government. But along the way, my boss, President William Ruto, changed his mind. And he is a boss. And in this situation, uh, Sam, we are not in a core presidency. I'm just a principal assistant to the president. Mm -hmm. What he says is what carries a day. And I don't argue with him. I, ha I may have reservations. And I resist with them. He persuades me many times. Other times he overrules me. And when I realized that he wants to, he started having a relationship with Raila Odinga, I slowly gave way because the boss is always right, you know? And, uh, and that is why many people say, oh, Rigadi Gashagwa, he had said he has put traps in State House so that Raila Odinga has not come. Yeah, that was my agreement with the President William Ruto. But that is not my house. The minute I realized they are meeting, they are interacting. I'm also not a stupid person. And I don't have to be told, you know, in black and white. I relaxed and I stopped even attacking Raila Odinga. And I let the president have his way. So by the time he decided to bring him into government, I had already formed an opinion that the president wants to work with Raila Odinga. And I was quite happy with it. In any case, in any case, my brother, and long-time confidant, President Uhuru Kenyatta, had told us that Raila is a good man. President William Ruto convinced us otherwise. And we abandoned our son Uhuru Kenyatta, and we decided to go with President William Ruto. Now President William Ruto has told us exactly what us, he has told us exactly what uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta had said, that Raila is a good man, we can work with him. If two, sitting, if two presidents say a man is good, who are you to argue with him? So we have said, Raida Odinga is a good man, and let's work with him. Let's uh, make him part of our political process, and let us build the country together. And I want to say, myself and my political base, the Mount Kenya region, have no problem whatsoever with Raida Odinga. In fact, what people are saying, and it's very interesting, <coughs> they are saying a Mount Kenya king does not pronounce himself twice on a matter. <coughs> Our son, President Uhuru Kenyatta, had pronounced himself on this matter. So that pronouncement carries the day. As we stand today, me and the mountain people are quite happy with Raila Odinga, and we don't have a problem with him whatsoever. And I can tell you, uh, I can tell you, 
because it's important that I say so. Myself and the mountain people feel very bad, very bad, uh, that we punished Uhuru Kenyatta. We demeaned him. We told him off. We embarrassed him for telling us that Raila Odinga is a good man. And we were very, very brutal with him. And we really, really, really hammered him. It has come to our knowledge that it was very unfair. Because his crime was to tell us that oh, Raila Odinga is a good man. And we decided that Raila Odinga is a bad man, William Ruto is a good man. Now that President William Ruto has said Raila is a good man, that is why I apologize to Huru Kenyatta and his family. And I owed him an apology on behalf of the community. Because what he had told us is what the president has told us. We had no business fighting him. We had no business disrespecting him. We had no business humiliating him. Right. So myself and the community, you know, owe Uhuru Kenyatta an apology. And I give that apology on behalf of the community. Okay. You know, and we said, you know, we, we know because that's what he had told us. And, and we were very unfair to him because, so, you know. Knowing what you know today, would you have made a different decision if you knew that in 2022? Well, you cannot talk backwards. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say what we would have done or not done. But things keep on changing. Yeah, but now we are saying everybody is good. You have said that once the king pronounces themselves, the pronouncement stands. Does that mean Uhuru Kenyatta is still the king of the mountain? Oh, yes, yes. yes. You do know? Uhuru Kenyatta is the undisputed king of the mountain. And what is your relationship with him? Good. Brotherly. When did you do that? Oh, we talk. You know what happens with our community? We are a very interesting community. We don't fight. We fight very rarely. And when we do, when we realize we fought without a good reason, we patch up. So we what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. How many we, months ago? Which uh, month? We, which year? We've been, uh, when we realized we made a mistake, I'm the one who made the first move of reaching out and apologizing because really we were unfair to Uru Kenyatta. You know? You know, we were very, very unfair. You know? Sometime, you know, sometime I really feel very bad that but I was so brutal yeah. on a man who was my great friend, my confidant, my brother, my kinsman. I was so brutal on him. And his crime was only one, saying Raila is a good man. And then the man I said, we don't want Raila Odinka, we want William Ruto. Then he comes and says the same thing. I felt very stupid, you know. In fact, another day, a very senior person abused me at the airport and called me stupid five times. And I looked at it, I was very bitter, but I looked at it later at night, and I thought probably he was right. I think I was stupid to fight my own brother, my kinsman, my confidant, for no good reason, for saying another person is a good man. I, I really regret uh, what I did, and my community does regret, and we are very apologetic to the Kenyatta family. And uh, what happens in my community is I say, that making a mistake is not bad, but repeating is unforgivable. And by the way, let me tell you some. From the experience of my community, myself and the leaders and the whole community fighting Uhuru Kenyatta, our son, a decision has been made by the community. In fact, it's a covenant. Never again, never again shall the people of the mountain ever, ever, fight their own. When was that decision made? Ah, you know, the queen people, the men, the men, you know, they just talk slowly. That has been agreed on. And that's why you find when a few leaders are being told to fight the Gadi Kashago, they are finding it very difficult. Because a decision has already been made. When? That, like almost a year ago. By who? That, by the community. In what forum? Ah, okay. don't, don't worry. There are you millions. Don't, you, don't, you don't know our people. There are millions our of people, people. Our people don't talk in meetings. They have a way of communicating. That is how they drove the British out of this land, you know, by communicating silently. There is a covenant among the Mount Kenya people Do that you they think never again, ever, be confused by anybody, be used by anybody to fight their own leader. They will never do it. And I also want to tell you, for the avoidance of doubt, for those who are trying to divide the Kikuyu, the Meru, and Envu, 
is an exercise in futility. Those three are one. And finally, they will be one. And, you know, we have seen these things happen during the Azimio campaign. Mm -hmm. You use a lot of money, you call meetings, you call MCAs, you call people in tents, you give them money, you persuade them, you do they take your money. Finally, they make a decision. And you see what they did in 2022. I can tell you this attempt to divide.